Hi, in this video, I want to show you how you can add uh, translations for the uh, sign butter signing page directly through your Salesforce org. This video might be a little bit more technical. It's not that it requires code or anything, but we are going, going to change some, uh, some JSON files and we're going to actually use the uh, Salesforce inspector uh, to update data directly because it's just a little bit easier simpler when you are gonna uh, start changing loads of uh, translations. So um, as a translation data source, having all the translations in five languages, English, Dutch, French, German, and English, uh, this data source comes out of the box in, uh, yeah, when you install Sign Butler. You can use it. And then of course, these five languages will be completely available on your, uh, on your signing page. Uh, if you want to make a change here, for instance, I say, okay, I want to make a change. I want to call this uh, signature uh, me or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Then you can make that change right here uh, directly in this uh, data source. If you want to start removing or start changing multiple items, that's what I'm going to show you right here. Of course, if you want to keep it simple and just use the languages we provide out of the box, you can just use this uh, user interface to make your changes. I'm going to undo my change eh, uh, because I don't want to start changing this. Um, so let's first see what is required. We are going to start our signing process from an opportunity in this case. It can be any object, but for now I choose an opportunity and our signer is going to be called Jack Rogers. Jack Rogers is a uh, contact and I have added a locale field for Jack. It's a, it's a pick list field that uh, to his to his uh, page layout. This uh, I'm just going to show you how this looks because uh, this field actually comes out of the box with sign butler. You can use it. You can ignore it. That's not a problem. You can have your own field uh, that uh, fills in this information via I don't know what huh? uh, uh, process builder or other kind of logic, or you can make it a uh, pick list dynamically uh, from uh, yeah set by uh, by your user. But as you can see, we provide a field on the uh, uh, contact out of the box. On the user, there is already a field that comes out of the box, so you don't have to add actually uh, fields to the user. So when I say here, go to user detail and my user detail i do uh, i go and check out what is the uh, settings for uh yeah that's my locale here it says french in france so um, yeah i'm dutch in belgium <laughs> but for some reason my user here says french in france so uh yeah behind the scenes how is this stored in salesforce salesforce uses the same notation as uh, yeah, as it's used by yeah internationally to provide locales, of course. Um, so let's take a look. I'm gonna use the Salesforce Inspector. If you have another tool to look uh, into the data of a record, don't worry about it. You can use your own. I'm very comfortable using the Salesforce Inspector. So in the Salesforce Inspector, if I type locale, then I can see that I have my locale key sit here, and in the deed, my locale is says. I'm uh, French speaking in France, which I'm not because I'm Dutch speaking in Belgium. <laughs> but okay, this is what it, what it says. And you can use this field from the user directly. So let's get back to our contact. On the contact, uh, like I said, we provide a field from SignButter that you can use, but not required. You can have your own. And what I've added here is uh, next to all of the fields that come out of the box, I added a new field, yeah, uh, French Belgium. So that's the kind of locale that I want to start adding here. And I want to have my uh, my user, of course, being able to say that he's French Belgium and seeing the French text uh, starting to appear. Okay, cool. That's uh, the, um, the step on how to make sure your user uh, can be or your contact can be identified in his language. Now, next step, let's take a look how to create a data source. As you can see from the out of the box data source, it is a static values data source. So what I'm going to do here is actually create a new data source of the type static values. Okay, I'm going to call it uh, custom sign 
Butler translations. Yeah, um, and that's it. So that's all that I need to do. You can see here that it's empty. I can start adding rows and uh, add all of the translations one by one, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah? So uh, I'm going to show you uh, maybe a more complex way, but if you uh, do it correctly, it's going to be much faster to handle it in this way. Now, um, so how this static data is stored uh, behind the scenes um, before it shows here very nicely in this uh, in this overview, uh, as you can see on uh, the out of the box sign request translations, uh, it's actually stored in a JSON format. So uh, yeah, all of this data just sits in what we call uh, or what the internet calls a JSON format. And there are of course lots of tools on the internet to make sure that you can very easily change your data directly in the, in the JSON format. If you want to have the latest up-to-date uh, tags that are on our signing page, then you can just go to our academy, download the uh, fields from here. So if you just want the English one, you can download it from here. If you want the full translations, all of the languages we provide, you can download the, uh, the file directly from here. After downloaded, uh, I like to work with a tool called JSON Editor Online. And you, as you can see, you can just say, well, um, yeah, this is the overview of all my, uh, of all my translations, all my tags on, this, on the page. Uh, so maybe they are structured like this uh, because yeah, then you don't have all the spaces, but you can just put it like here. I put it on this and then it's nicely structured. Okay, I'm going to start from this one to create my data source. And what I want to support for my, uh, for my uh, use case here is actually two languages. I want to support English and I want to support French Belgium. So um, I'm not going to start out of fresh here huh, because we have, of course, a French translation here already. So what I'm going to do here is just going to take this French translation. and start with that one. So uh, I just copy this. And now when this is copied, I'm going to take a look and see, OK, um, the, the language ends here. I'm just going to paste it behind this one. Now, uh, this is not going to be French because I want to take French Belgium. Yeah? You can have separate ones if you say, well, I want a separate one for French in France, French in Belgium, French in, uh, in Austria, French in Canada. That's perfectly possible. You can have all of these locales yeah, because maybe the French language is basically the same, but there are small things maybe that are different. Uh, if you want to make another locale, like I want uh, Polish, for instance, in uh, Poland, yeah, perfectly possible. You can uh, specify your own language right here. You just have to pro uh, you just have to provide or the language, or the full uh, language together with uh, the uh, the country in which you want to speak it. If you don't specify the country, that means it will actually fall back to the language only. So if I'm a French in Belgium as my um, yeah, like this one here, French uh, France. Uh, but there is no French for France in the uh, translations, it will fall back to the French one. So that makes it very easy, of course, because yeah, then this fallback can also always make sure you have a translation in French. And you don't have to specify as, uh, one for French in Belgium, French in France, uh, and so on and so on. So let's go back here. I want to go for French in Belgium. Uh, what I'm going to do is just going to make a few changes here. Uh, to make sure that we can all see that I actually uh, did this in my own data source. Uh, okay, the reject, the download button, why not? Uh, the error, well, we're not going to have any errors. So uh, uh, here and there, I'm just going to uh, make some changes so we can see that this is actually the translation that we need. In your own language, translate it any way you want, of course, that makes sense for your user. Okay, cool. Now I have. Uh, my French in Belgium, and I have the English part. So I'm just going to make this as uh, small as possible. So I'm just going to compact the JSON and then select everything and copy. Oh, that's cut. And copy it directly from here. I'm going to go back to my uh, custom uh, translation, uh, sign butter translation uh, data source. Going to go over to the uh, 
um, Salesforce Inspector and show all data. So in here, there should be a field uh, called static data JSON. This one is currently empty, but what we're going to do, of course, is paste our entire JSON into here. So that's all of our translations are now here. So if I just save this, cool, that's done. Um, and now next up is that I'm going to refresh this page. And what you will see here is that now all of the translations are filled in as I would expect. So I had the English ones and I have the French Belgium ones, as you can see, and all of the translations I just did here. So changes can be done here directly if you uh, if you like that, if you want to do that, yeah, uh, that's not a problem. If I just say, I want to change only this one, yeah, say uh, FR at the FRBA, of course, that's perfectly possible. I can just save it directly from here. I have my data source. Now, I have a field on Jack that says, well, I'm going to go for uh, French Belgium. Uh, now, let's go to my, to another data source uh, that actually selects Jack as a signer. So that is a data source, and I'm going to use a signer's data source that will identify the signers for my sign requests. Oh, uh, no, cancel this one. I'm going to use the Stockholm Builder. On this one, what I'm going to do, very easy, on, uh, on Jack. Yeah, so that's my signer, signer contact. I'm gonna add a field. So I'm gonna go to this contact field and I'm gonna look for locale. Yeah, locale field. Just switch the API name and you can see it's uh, actually the field that I want. Add the field, save the, uh, the query, and now the field will be added directly there. Okay, next up, we're gonna have to update our um, sign request template. So we have a configuration made for a, for a sign request, and that's what we're calling a sign request template. And this is a very simple one because it actually just says, uh, give me one user or give me one signer. I'm gonna go to the edit screen. So I'm gonna use my signers data source. Uh, next up, I'm gonna add a translation data source. The translation data source was ooh, custom sign button. Uh, sign butter translation. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go next. See, my language is statically set to English on this one. I don't want that yeah, because I want it actually to be set on the uh, signer locale. So that's this field. So the the locale field. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna do the. Uh, I'm gonna remove the the documents. That's not required for this demo. And then I'm gonna add this signer again. Cool. Submit my template. So my template is saved. I have set my data source, my translations data source. I told the sign butter how to identify the language of my uh, of my signer. And now next last step is of course just let's test this. So we started from an uh, an opportunity, and of course I'm gonna test this from this opportunity. Okay, click the button right here and let's see what happens. It should send out a sign request. Yeah, the sign is, uh, the request is sent out for signing. Uh, normally I would have to go through an email, but I'm just gonna be lazy and gonna go to my, uh, to my list of sign requests. And here I can immediately start signing. So if I click this button, everything goes well. The entire page will be in French. So everything went well because I indeed have my translations, my custom translations that I've put here uh, on all the buttons. Now I said that there were two languages available. So if uh, our dear friend Jack wants to move to English, not a problem. He can just switch to English and switch back to French if required. So now this gives a perfect overview on how you can add translations, manage translations, and how you can really make your uh, overview on uh, on sign butter as custom as possible and as uh, yeah as uh, the best experience for your customer as possible okay that's it any questions do not hesitate to contact us